Why hey guys, not? welcome back. We are going over a recent two-day aboard the Legend. This video right here is from our uh, two-day charter, uh, private charter for 976 tuna. We had some really great fishing on bluefin and a couple of uh, yellowfin mixed in as well. Looks like it's this all fly line here for you today, um, which what were they using for test? Uh, both days was all fly line fish for the most part. Uh, guys were using like 30 pound tests. That seemed to be uh, a good number to get bit on. 30 pound tests with small hooks like size 2 or size 4 circle hooks. Uh, definitely smaller hooks and lighter line. It was tough to get a bait to get away from the boat. You can see this beautiful, beautiful weather that we had during the trip. There's not much wind or drift. So sometimes when it's like this, guys struggle to get their bait away from the boat. So what are some things that people can do? Just cast farther if they can, or especially it's important to go out of the corner, or what would you say the best tips are? Um, it's just uh, working at it. you got to work at it. Sometimes it'll take 10 baits to get one that's going to swim away from the boat. And the guys that are willing to work at it change baits and uh, try to find that hot bait that's going to swim away from the boat are the ones that get bit and succeed. Uh, so that's, that's what it takes sometimes. Yeah, and for a lot of, um, I think, newer fishermen, they are a little shy with, you know, changing out their bait pretty often. They like to go a little bit on a longer soak. Um, but really, I mean, that's what bait is there for, right? It's like, go ahead. If you don't like the feel of that one, it's not swimming away within the first 30 seconds. Change it out. I mean, that's, again, that's why we have these big bait tanks. Definitely. You'll see, if you ever see me fishing, you'll see me uh, fight, get in the water right away and that bait doesn't move. I'm changing out and... I have no problem doing that. Um, this trip was a little bit difficult for us. The water is starting to warm up very quickly out there. Uh, we started seeing 71 degree water and this was a weekend trip. So a lot of boats were running uh, late in July here. The San Diego fleet is pumping and the bait company was having a little bit of a hard time getting enough bait cured out. So we did have issues with bait on this trip where there was a lot of red scaly scabbed up bait you know, that uh, had a hard time swimming. So guys really had to work at it to find the right one. We even had to go back in and rebate in between days on this trip. Well, it's nice that the fish were close enough to be able to do that, right? Yeah, it worked out perfectly for us. Um, the fish were about 40 miles offshore at this point. Uh, so we were able to uh, get back in and rebate and get back out there for the morning bite. And it worked out perfect for us. We, uh, we had two really spectacular daytime bites now bluefin typically like cooler water right uh for the most part you know they uh they aren't tropical like the yellowfin and dorado that you would call um which is why on those eight day trips that people okay, go way down there water. and they're catching those uh 200 pound yellowfin it's in the much warmer water um the water that you see off the coast of southern Great california job. fits the bluefin a lot better than uh those tropical southern waters way down there you can see this guy here he uh his rod was still pointing down to the fish um again make sure that you go into free spool once that fish is gaffed so that way you don't break your rod yeah for sure you can see right here uh the end of the fight a little bit of a struggle and matt's trying to direct him to to lay out that fish for him um and like we've touched on other videos that that is key working with your deck hand or whoever has the gaff next to you to lay out that fish so that you can give them a, a good opportunity to put a headshot on that fish. This guy also is has the butt of the rod in his right armpit. Um, it's not very traditional, so we really recommend trying to use that left armpit as, as at all possible. Um, it just gives you a little bit more leverage and a little bit more room to operate with uh, the your real hand being a little bit more free. Yeah, if it works, it works. It's funny, we kind of see uh, East Coast videos sometimes where they put that uh, rod and reel on the right side. And uh, here off Southern California, everybody puts it on the left side. Um, I've found it much more comfortable myself for fighting these big fish. And of course, you see a lot of guys where it just gets tucked into the hip the whole fight as well. Yeah, but like you said, you know, whatever's comfortable, whatever gets the fish up to the boat, whatever you fish with confidence, that's the most important thing. Yeah, that's all that really matters at the end of the day here is getting that fish up and getting it in the boat. It doesn't have to look pretty as long as you uh, get the job done. Man, look at this beautiful fish coming up right now. Perfect circles. This guy's doing a great job of keeping his rod just straight out. And oh, there he goes. <laughs> yeah, that was our intro clip right there. And 
the fight just wasn't over for him. The fish saw the boat and took off. Um, you can see Josh lifting another nice fish up and over the rail here. And once again, look at this weather. It was just absolutely beautiful on this day. So these guys were lucky to get incredible weather and really good fishing all on the same trip. Now with a uh, small bluefin, or I guess with any bluefin, you know, is this more of a run and gun trip where you're running to different schools kind of in in a small matter of time or is the school kind of staying with you guys? Uh, these fish particular in this day um, were very, very boat friendly and uh, we had long drifts, um, two to three hour drifts where it wasn't ever wide open. It wasn't like we had every single rod on the boat bent, but we would keep like four or five fish going at a time at like all times. Uh, which worked out really well for these guys. Um, it wasn't too much chaos, uh, just enough controlled chaos where guys were able to communicate, uh, moving over and under, talking to each other, and really minimize the amount of tangles. And we're going to post a uh, fly line setup video here in the next week or so. Um, but tell us a little bit, give us the overview of the fly line setup that they're using. Yeah, so these fish have kind of been transitioning. Uh, we're seeing more of the schoolie fish in this warm water. So we've had some good fly line fishing. Uh, like we said, 30 pound and small hooks were working really well. Guys were using fluorocarbon leaders. Um, and for the most part, guys were using like an eight foot stick, something rated 20 to 50 pound. Um, like you said, we're going to go over all the details and we're going to put out a fly line video because uh, fishing is kind of transitioning to that right now. So if you guys want to see or uh, pick up any clues on uh, how to get your fly line set up, check that one out.